Hey folks, welcome to this look at Worldographer, uh, a new feature in Worldographer version 1.55 here. This just came out and towards the end of the first week of August in 2022. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program. What you see in front of you is, well, a map that was generated with Worldographer as a background. And then here is our Worldographer World Kingdom setup screen. Um, this is, has a few new features, the most prominent of which is a live preview. Uh, that as long as your um, hexes wide and high for your map are 200 or less, um, it's going to auto-generate, uh, auto-update that as soon as you make any changes. So here you can you know, see what it looks like with less land or with more land. You can spin that way up. Um, or if you're using uh, our icosahedral map projection, which is kind of an unrolled D20, if you look there, um, if that, as long as this is, uh, the triangle side size is 24 hexes or less, or I mean 50 hexes or less, and so since we're set to 24, uh, that works for us, um, it will auto-generate this as well. It's the same deal, you know, if I spin these, we're going to get more or less land, depending on what we pick there. Um, I should point out that for just making the drawing of this very quick, these are just little tiny squares. Um, so that just makes it uh, very responsive so that as you are spinning these, uh, you'll get a, an updated map. Um, but we're going to flip back to the flat projection. I'm going to take a moment to just describe each of these controls and focus on the new ones, though. Hex orientation, do you want the hexes to have the columns lining up like what you've got behind here, which is what I typically do, but there are plenty of people who prefer the rows lining up where they each go straight across, and that's your other option. Flat and, and uh, icosahedral projection we already talked about. Hex is high and wide. should be pretty easy to uh, understand. Uh, I will point out that in Worldographer, uh, you need the pro version if you want to expand an existing map. Um, in the free version, you're kind of limited to the number of hexes you choose initially. Hex width and height. These are the number of pixels that the hex map will use uh, for display uh, initially. Uh, but that's always changeable just with these spinners here, as well as zooming out and in and out with your scroll wheel and so forth. Initial view level. This is another pro feature in Worldographer um, to change these with an existing map. Um, when you're creating your initial map, you can pick any you want. If you like to make your maps top down, start with the world. If you want to start with just a region, maybe you want to do a kingdom or maybe a larger region starting with a continent. Um, there's also a province level, which isn't something you can generate from the start, but it's used oftentimes people want to make a kingdom map that might be five, six, seven, eight um, miles across per hex. And so you can then drill down to one mile hexes with that province level, and, and you would do that. Over here, this drop-down has province, as well as there's also an option to generate uh, a new map level on the generate menu. Um, this gives you some sizing information of what looks good typically for your maps, like how, there's, how they should be sized. Here is the random seed. So this is important, uh, and this is new in Worldographer 1.55, where um, you can change the random seed and then go back to it. And that's good for, that, that's needed for us to uh, make sure that when, the, when you do the preview and then do the real map, you get the same result. Um, and as long as you keep all these settings the same and you remember the random seed and you're using the same version of Worldographer, you would get the same resulting map. Um, at some point, you know, if there's more changes made to the random generator algorithm, um, the, if you, even if you use the same random seed and the same other settings, you might get a different map because we be, might be making our calls to the random number generator in a different order, have some additional things slipped in there, and so you wouldn't get the same result. Um, over here, uh, this has been in the tool for a while, the all one terrain. Hey, if you want to make a blank map and then sketch everything in or draw everything by hand, you can hand place everything, or you can sketch everything in and then go up to the tools menu and we've got a terrain wizard, which is kind of a nearest neighbor fill. You can also pick a particular terrain and say that you know that you want your world to be mostly, you know, mostly jungle forest. You can start with that and then and then rough in everything else. Or you can generate the terrain, and uh, we can do this 
by a region. So if you're doing just a kingdom, you might want to start with uh, either a blank map or a region. And here the region does show our um, terrain wizard and it, it is sketching everything in and then it is using the data, the settings on this dialog to fill everything in. And this just picks what terrain you're going to have on your map and then what uh, what's the chance of each terrain type to be show up adjacent to the, the prior place terrain. So you get something like that. Or you can go back to the full world if you're working on your world map and you want to, want to like I said, design your world top down. You can do that. Um, right now we've got the land frequency set pretty high. Uh, we can go back to a more Earth-like world with 30%. Um, it is doing some balancing of your world where it's trying to make sure that we cut things off uh, on the sides in ocean and we kind of have an equal amount of ocean on both sides. That's new in Worldographer uh, 1.55 before. We did do some logic to try to keep it separate, but um, not to balance it. And uh, however, I will point, you know, if you go to like 90% where we're going to have a mostly land world, there's no point in that, so it doesn't try it. Um, at some point, I forget if it's, you know, 70, 80%, at some point, it doesn't, it doesn't really try to do that. So, uh, mountain hill frequency, this has been in the tool for a while. Uh, we renamed it because you get hills as well as mountains. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to just do these spinners and just see how the world changes um, based on that. So you can set this. And I should point out, um, 82%, you know, so you can see the dark brown and the light brown. Those are your um, mountains and, and, and your hills. Um, but there's also some of the green that's there would also be forested mountains, for example. Um, so what you're seeing here is you're, you might not be seeing the full picture unless you keep that in mind. We'll go back down to 30 just for the sake of argument so we can see some of the other settings. Vegetation, you know, hey, let's, let's crank that up. Or, you know, what if we want a very lush lush world with a lot of vegetation, this is what we get. Um, and again, you know, you can go back and you can change this random seed and get some different layout for your uh, world. More on that in a moment, though. Uh, desert frequency, so of the remaining land, the land that isn't mountainous or vegetation, um, so because you can have um, forested mountains, like I was just saying, and forested hills, these two are based on the overall amount of land um, but this one here is, the desert is based on the remaining land. Um, so the land that's, that's still tagged as just this basic green farmland, um, that's what it's using for the desert frequency, basically. Um, so we can crank this down some, you know, set this down to, say, 40, and then crank this up to, say, 80. Um, and, oh, didn't mean to increase that, but so you get something where you get a lot more tan in there, the light tan versus if we put it back down, you can see the difference, much less tan. Coastal swamp, uh, or co coastal forest going to swamp. So this is new in 1.55. We didn't have the random generator adding swamp to your world. Um, and this now gives you that chance of, hey, let's make some of that coastal forest into swamp or more at your, at your location, latitudes closer to the poles. Um, so this is just doing a 5%, and then Swamp continues. So looking at the adjacent terrain to any terrain that's been changed to Swamp or more, and continuing it um, with uh, a 40% chance of each of the, uh, of the adjacent terrain to, to become Swamp. So you get a larger area. Ice, this controls your, your polar caps, you know, pretty much, as well as, you know, do you get some, how far down do you get evergreen forest instead of deciduous forest? That's what that will control, and that's been in the tool for quite a while. Um, tropical, so this controls whether or not your um, forests near the equator become um, tropical forests. Um, so you can see some, some of this green getting changing color, a darker color because of that. That was in the tool for a while as well. Uh, however, landforms, this is new, so you can say what kind of landforms do you want. Uh, do you want, you know, mostly large continents where it's going to do larger land masses when it places them? Or is it going to, you know, kind of go a little bit smaller, like what we had there, or even smaller, or even smaller? Now, for something like this, this you probably wanted to have 
a much uh, lower overall land if you're trying to do a water world type thing, or mostly water world. I guess if we wanted to do water world exactly, I mean, we could do something like 2%. But let me put it back to 10 so I can show some of these other controls. So clustering, uh, this is new, and this is basically controlling, hey, um, when you're placing that next land, use the original, the first bit of land that was placed, use that um, and pick pick two new locations for the land instead of just one, and then and, and pick the closer of the two. That's what clustering will do. So if I crank this up to 100, you'll see where it's trying to do that for all of them instead of just 30% of them. So you can see, hey, this was probably roughly where we started, where we placed our first piece of land. And, you know, occasionally, though, you know, this one was placed because this one and maybe something over here or something even further away over here was... Um, was the second choice, and so I picked this one. So you still get it spread out some, um, but it does uh, cluster. Now you can allow drift, which is kind of going to undo that, um, where it, it's going to use the previous placement, not just the original placement. And so that's how you know you can start say here, and it can drift around for the 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 the, the place to anchor the next one. So as it drifts around the map. Uh, it spreads out, so it kind of undoes the clustering concept, but it's another option. Um, let me put this back up to uh, 30, and I guess I'm just, I just like Earth-like worlds, and so I'm picking something like that. Oh, it's clustering, though. So that's how we end up with one big landmass, even though we're saying give us some continents and, and some islands. It's because it's trying to cluster everything. So it still gave us a, a little island here, and maybe this is a little island, or maybe there's a little land bridge there, but um, we can change clustering down to, say, 30% again, and so you get something like that, which is kind of cool. Um, number of nations. So when you, uh, this has been in the tool for a while, when you generate a world, it will, um, when you generate a world, it will also generate a bunch of data about your world, which you can ignore or you can use, you can fully edit it. Uh, we'll show that briefly, um, but it, it creates that information, and this is saying, hey, put in 10 random nations, make 10 random nations for me. Um, and then the terrain icons that we're going to use, do we want the classic set or do we want the isometric set? Um, now, for the preview, we're still using the background colors of the classic set um, because the isometrics are all image, so there's no background color to them. But for those of you who haven't seen uh, the isometrics, let me show this, show you what they look like. Um, so this is what they look like. They're kind of inspired by the, you know, maybe civilization computer games, especially, you know, those maybe from 10, 15 years ago. But let's pull this back up. Uh, let's go back to classic and generate again. And so you get, you know, here's your, your world map that got generated. You can see it's got the tropical... You can see here's the coastal uh, turning into a swamp land, some more over here. If I jump back to the one of the prior maps, though, that we had done, just because it's quicker for me to find the points of interest here. So if I go up to data, like I was saying with the world info, it's generating a bunch of religions, cultures, and nations. First, it generates the cultures. And um, one, of the new thing, one of the other new things in Worldographer 1.55 is we have now some naming information for halfling locations. So now you can have a culture that is halfling, and for whatever reason this is named Tada. Um, so it, it, it had those syllables in there, and, and the, it's got some construction rules, which you can, in the pro version of Worldographer, you can edit that on the configure menu. There's configure world and name data on there. Um, but that's the culture, and that culture gets used to generate religions and nations so you've got a bunch of different religions here. For nations, you've got these here, and I happen to know from looking at it before, just to make the video short, I looked ahead, and here Plain Garden was uh, the nation based on the Tada culture. And so we've got that. Um, if we go into here, uh, here are uh, the different city locations and town town names that are generated for Plain Garden. So, you know, as you'd expect, we've got Newfield, Mistem, Ravenwater, Pearlberry, uh, Baybrook. 
So those are our locations. So that's also new in Worldographer 1.5. So I'm just going to pull back up the dialog just so we have this at the end. Um, did I? Um, yeah, we went through all of that. Been through the classic, and we've been done an isometric, and we did the drift cluster. So these are the new things. You know, cluster allow drift landforms, the swamp um, information here, and of course this big preview, which I think is going to be something that you can really just kind of look at these and see what does what does the world look like when I change things or if I change the random seed you know just in you know I can get these all the right ratios that I want and, and then I can play with this random seed or I can play with this say I want that what do I want that so um that's we're logging for 1.55 uh, stay tuned for what's new in in, in the next update Thank you very much, and thanks for your support.